succeeded at the uh, It's with uh, indescribably great joy <laughs> and overwhelming happiness uh, that I can announce today that the Bishop of Rome, uh, our Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, uh, the successor of St. Peter and the Chief Bishop of the Catholic Church, has appointed uh, His Excellency the Most Reverend James Douglas Conley as the ninth Bishop of the Diocese of Lincoln, succeeding your humble servant whose retirement and resignation the Pope has accepted today. This was presented two years ago, and Rome is known as the Eternal City. <laughs> I'm sure that the entire Diocese of Lincoln joins me in welcoming and congratulating Bishop Conley and telling him uh, how honored and flattered we are to have him as our new spiritual shepherd, uh, have such a distinguished and accomplished prelate uh, named to our diocese. Collectively, I know we should all thank God for this precious and important gift which he has bestowed on us through the ministry of Christ Vicar. I know that we also, uh, all of us, promise our prayers and dedicated support to all the undertakings and apostolic labors here in southern Nebraska that the bishop will undertake himself. We can't be happier. I can't express, there are words with which I can express my happiness at this wonderful uh, appointment, not only of a great priest, a great bishop, a great prelate, but also a wonderful personal friend over many years. Until now, as you might know, Bishop Conley has been the auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Denver. He will be installed as uh, the ninth bishop of Lincoln on November 20th uh, next. And uh, in the meantime, uh, whether to your dismay or not, uh, Bishop Reskowitz will continue to be the apostolic administrator of the diocese. Uh, without uh, my talking too much further, I'd like to introduce to you the new Bishop of Lincoln, Bishop James Conley. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen. Your Excellency, Bishop Reskowitz, my brother priests, consecrated men and women religious, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. First of all, good morning and thank you for, for being here and for giving me such a, a warm welcome. This is going to be a long day and uh, I'm very, very happy and thrilled to be here in Lincoln. And I'm honored and humbled first of all, to stand before you. Uh, there's no, there's nothing more important for a bishop than the care of souls. And as Bishop Reskowitz told you, our Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, has asked me to come to Lincoln to serve as your new shepherd and to lead and guide the people of this diocese as your ninth bishop. And I'm honored to begin my Episcopal ministry here in Lincoln during this 125th anniversary year of this great diocese. Together we have one aim, that all men and women will come to know Jesus Christ, will live in His abundance, the abundance of His love, and will become holy as our Heavenly Father is holy. And I'm dedicated above all, to this noble mission, and I'm grateful to know that I can count on your prayers and your collaboration. As you know, today is the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross, and I chose this day for the announcement because the cross for us is everything. The cross is at the heart and center of the Christian life. Jesus Christ conquered sin and death through his suffering on the cross, his cross, death, and resurrection, the Paschal Mystery. St. Thomas Aquinas reflected that, quote, there is nothing to unify God and the soul but the cross. So today, I pray that we might be united with our Blessed Mother at the foot of the cross. Lincoln has long been known as a place of holy priests, 
holy and numerous seminarians. I understand we have 44 seminarians currently in formation. Holy religious and holy families. The Lord has also blessed this diocese with holy bishops. <laughs> Courageous shepherds after the heart of Jesus. The leadership of Bishop Fabian Bruskowitz over these past 20 years, 20 plus years, <laughs> has been an incredible grace uh, for this community and this local church. He's been a true champion of the Catholic faith and has been a personal hero of mine for years. All of us owe him a great debt of gratitude. The state of Nebraska, with its capital city here in Lincoln, is also well known for its steadfast defense of life, especially unborn life, for civil and religious liberty, for traditional marriage between a man and a woman, and strong family values. I am not yet the Bishop of Lincoln but I'm already proud of the people of the state. Although I come from Kansas originally, and I'll remain a Jayhawk basketball fan forever. <laughs> Gotta get that straight. I'm excited to be in Husker country. At least we're in different conferences now, right? And having been on the receiving end of football dominance for it seems like centuries, I'm happy now to be on the other side of the ball. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to beating Arkansas State tomorrow. So. I also understand, they tell me, that some of the best kolaches in the world are produced in this diocese, just down the road in Wilbur and Prague. My life as a priest is already connected with the history of this diocese. As a priest of the Diocese of Wichita, I served under the leadership of Bishop Michael Jekylls and Bishop Thomas Olmsted, both men chosen as bishops from the ranks of the Lincoln Presbyterate. As auxiliary bishop in Denver, I read about the legacies of Archbishop James Casey and Bishop Henry Tian, whose Bishop Tian, whose, whose pectoral cross that I'm wearing now, Bishop Tian was a priest of the Diocese of Wichita. He was the second bishop of Lincoln, and he was the third bishop of Denver. And so uh, I talked the archivist into letting me take this cross with me <laughs> to show the kind of the connection between the three dioceses, sort of a trifecta, you might say. And also, interesting enough, as you delve into the history, Wichita, Lincoln, and Denver are all celebrating their 125th anniversary this year as a diocese. So there's all kinds of connections. And because of the strong friendship between Bishop David Maloney, the bishop who received me into the seminary in Wichita, and Bishop Glennon P. Flavin, a true giant in the history of the Diocese of Lincoln, many of the priests of Lincoln were seminarians with me at St. Pius X Seminary in Erlinger, Kentucky and at Mount St. Mary's Seminary in Emmitsburg and I just met a couple of them and they look a lot older than, <laughs> than we did in the seminary. I don't know what happened to them. <laughs> and so to my brother priests who are here in, in great number, thank you. You will be my closest collaborators in ministry here in the Diocese of Lincoln. I look forward to forging the bonds of fraternity and friendship with you. I'm honored to know you as brothers in the vineyard of the Lord. And I look forward to renewing old friendships, old bonds of friendship from our seminary days and getting to know many of you for the first time. Brothers, we depend upon each other for the salvation of souls, which is our primary mission. 
men and women religious, your consecration serves the whole church. You witness to the kingdom of God by your vows. You are a sign of the universal vocation to holiness. And I'm grateful for your prayers and your ministry, particularly the prayers of the cloistered contemplative sisters who pray for us unceasingly. My dear lay men and women, I look forward to spending time with you and your families, getting to know you and your communities. I'm eager to share life in Jesus Christ with you through the sacraments, particularly in the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And I'm eager to work alongside of you in the new evangelization as members of the body of Christ. I became a Catholic as a young man during my undergraduate years at the University of Kansas. I was raised a Presbyterian. And after I was ordained a priest, I had the privilege of receiving both my mother and my father into the Catholic Church. And because of my conversion experience during those college years, I have a great heart for sharing our Catholic faith with our brothers and sisters in Christ who are not Catholic, and with those in their student years who so often hunger for a real encounter with the risen Lord. Most of my priesthood has been spent working with college students, both as a university chaplain and a theological instructor at three different colleges. And I know that the University of Nebraska Newman Center has a stellar reputation, and that important apostolate fills me with joy. I also have a great love and appreciation for agriculture and for the rural life. After I graduated from college, I moved out to north central Kansas, just a few miles south of Superior, Nebraska, along the Kansas-Nebraska border. And I began truck farming with a few college friends of mine. And I fell in love with the beautiful rhythm of the rural life and the wonders of God's creation. And it was from there, farming in north central Kansas, and that experience that I discerned my call to the priesthood and I left uh, for the seminary. My Episcopal motto is taken from my spiritual patron, another great convert, blessed John Henry Newman. The motto is, heart speaks to heart, corad cor loquitur. And I hope that as our hearts begin to speak with one another, all of us may encounter the love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus Christ. Of course, today I want to thank my family, my father who died in 2006, I remember him today, my mother who has been my constant support, and you're going to love her. She's 85 years old and she still plays golf. <laughs> She's a pistol. And uh, I also want to thank my sister and brother-in-law and their family, all who live in Kansas City, which is close, closer than, than Denver, I know. Yeah. When I told my mom that I was named the Bishop of Lincoln, first thing she said, but I like Denver. <laughs> I said, Mom, I'm sorry, but that's, you know, I'm, I can't help that. <laughs> and then she said, well, where's Lincoln? I said, Lincoln is just three hours from here. And she goes, oh, so you'll be closer and you'll come and see me. I said, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so she was happy with that. But I want to thank in a special way our Blessed Mother, Mary, under the title of the Immaculate Conception. All three of the dioceses that I've been in, Wichita, Denver, and now Lincoln, the Immaculate Conception is the patroness of those dioceses. So I ask for her intercession in a special way. She is our life, our sweetness, and our hope. And I wish to consecrate my ministry here in Lincoln to her under the Immaculate Conception. I want to thank again Bishop Breskowitz for his leadership and for welcoming me so warmly to the Diocese of Lincoln. I'm grateful to all those who've aided me in this, these kind of whirlwind few days since I was informed uh, that I was coming to Lincoln. I want to thank Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, the Apostolic Nuncio in the United States for his help and his kind service during this time. 
I also want to thank Archbishop Samuel Aquila and the clergy of the faithful in Denver. And in a particular way, I would like to thank Archbishop Charles Chaput, the former Archbishop of Denver and currently the Archbishop of Philadelphia. Archbishop Chaput formed me and shaped me as a bishop, and I'll be ever uh, indebted to him for that. And I'm especially grateful to our Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, for his confidence in me and naming me to this great diocese of Lincoln. I have big shoes to fill, and I want to urge all of us to pray for Pope Benedict as he begins his pastoral visit to Lebanon today, a very dangerous part of the world where there are four million people in the country of Lebanon, two million, over half are Catholic. And so it's a very Catholic country, but it's in a very troubled part of our world. So I urge all of us to keep him in our prayers over these two days during his pastoral visit. I promise my prayers and I promise to give all that I am to you, to the people of Southern Nebraska. And I will count very much on your prayers and the grace of God. Thank you and God bless you. This hat, this hat was given to you by the Chancellor of Denver, and it's, uh, it's got my initials, JDC, on the side. Of it. It's a custom-made Husker hat. So um, I think, uh, yeah, Bishop, right. please be seated, and uh, if any of the media people would like, or anybody wants to ask some questions, we'll try for a short time. Uh, the Bishop will try to answer them. Just put up your hand and identify yourself. Any? Yes, yes, sir. I'm Paul Hamill, the World Herald. Bishop, do you plan any, you know, Lincoln's got a lot of unique aspects in its diocese. Do you plan any changes as far as altar girls or any of that? Well, I've got, um, you know, a lot to learn. Uh, when a new bishop comes to a, a diocese, the first thing he does is to learn the diocese. And so <clears throat> I don't expect any changes. Um, you know, I want to get to know the life of the diocese. And like I said in my <clears throat> statement is I have tremendous admiration for the Episcopal leadership of this diocese, not just Bishop Reswitz, but all the bishops. Um, and so, uh, as, I, as I said, Lincoln, I've always held the Diocese of Lincoln in high esteem, and I know that it's a very strong diocese, rich with vocations, rich with Catholic education, rich in family life, as I mentioned. So. I'm not going to mess up. I'm not going to mess around with that. You know, I'm going to try to continue to build it up and encourage it. Uh, so, um, you know, that's that's my first thing is to get to know the diocese. You, uh, Bishop Brusco has mentioned you might be personal friends. Right. We, um, you know, I served for ten years in Rome uh, at the Congregation for Bishops, and I lived at the Villa Stretch, which is the house for diocesan and priests who work in the Holy See, and uh, where Bishop Bresquist lived himself um, before me. And uh, two priests from the Lincoln Diocese, uh, now Bishop Michael Jekylls and uh, Monsignor Tom Fucinaro, um, also lived at the Villa Stritch. And so we lived together for about 10 years, and Bishop Bresquist would come over um, to visit his priests, and we would always get together. And um, so we've known each other. That was that. That's probably been about uh, nearly 16, 17 years. So uh, we developed a friendship over the years through the Lincoln priests. Daniel Duke, Lincoln Pius. Um, what message do you have for young people today? Great question. I see we have uh, some focus missionaries here. Woo. That's great. <laughs> and like I said, I've spent most of my priesthood. Um, working in campus ministry, teaching high school, so I have a great heart for young people. And what would I say to you? I'd say yeah, for young people, you know, there is there's, there's a great um, excitement, that's not really the best word, but there is a great enthusiasm, I think, among the faith of young people that is contagious. You know, in Denver, uh, Curtis Martin founded Focus and I'm good close friends with, with Curtis, and I've done a lot of work with Focus, and I've done a lot of work on the, 
the uh, secular campuses in the Archdiocese of Denver, CU Boulder, CSU in Fort Collins, and UNC in Greeley. And I love, I, I, I get energized being around young people. And there is, uh, I think, with this generation now, I think there's a great thirst and, and, and desire for the truth. Because as Pope Benedict has so often said, the dictatorship of relativism is so prevalent in our culture and ultimately, relativism is a dead end. It doesn't give us the answers we want. And young people want answers. They want the truth. Something they, the permanent things that they can, and, and the, one of the reasons why I, I love working with youth is because it was during my college years that I discovered the truth and became a Catholic. And um, as Providence would have it, I was invited to celebrate the opening mass uh, this Sunday at Harvard University in Cambridge and to give the uh, opening address for the academic year. Focus is beginning at Harvard this year. And so in my talk this weekend, uh, I'm going to share some of these ideas about the search for truth. And um, I just got back from uh, walking a portion of the Camino to Santiago de Compostela, uh, the last hundred miles. And you run into a lot of young people along the Camino. and Many of the people walk the Camino to the tomb of St. James without even realizing that this is an ancient religious pilgrimage. But they're all searching. They're all seeking something. You know, and they're sacrificing to make this pilgrimage, which isn't easy. Um, and, and they're looking for something. And I think that thirst for truth in the hearts of everyone, but particularly young people, excites me. And I look forward to, to working with young people and to... Uh, uh, continue to to be close to them, heart to heart. Back there. In the back. And you're like to see, I am uh, Logan Bird. I'm one of your focus missionaries. Great, Logan. I was curious if you could talk more about your conversion in college. What brought that about? Well, I kind of read my way into the Catholic Church. I was the beneficiary of a great books program. Father Connor can tell you about that. He was also in the program um, at the University of Kansas, which was focused on the great books of classical. Uh, Western culture. So we read uh, the great uh, pagan authors, the Iliad and the Odyssey from Homer and all of the great classics. And in the second year, or sophomore year, we read Christian authors. And it was really through, um, again, the search for truth and goodness and beauty that I discovered in literature and poetry and music and the arts, which really this program was all centered on. Um, discovering that in the Catholic Church is the fullness of truth and goodness and beauty. And, um, you know, I, as I said, I was raised a Presbyterian, but kind of only nominal. I was basically a happy pagan. I wasn't an atheist or anything. I was probably an agnostic. It, just didn't, it was kind of just indifferent to God and to religion, like most people are today, unfortunately. And when I discovered the richness of our Catholic heritage in all of these areas, um, I just, I embraced the church and, um, it, you know, fell in love with the church. Never really realizing that I'd become a, become a bishop or a priest or bishop, uh, but still it was just a great romance with the truth. And so that was really my, my conversion experience in college. All right, the man with the headphones. <laughs> Bishop, will you be utilizing more of the social media when working with you than on many of the Absolutely. I mean, Pope Benedict has really urged us to use all the means of communication. So um, I'm a big supporter of, of uh, social communication. You know, I have a Facebook page, a Twitter, all that stuff. So, you know, I look uh, forward to, uh, you know, to using everything to bring the gospel to the world. And... Um, you know, the, the new social media is something that our Holy Father has urged us to use in the new evangelization. So, yes, I'm looking forward to, uh, to utilizing uh, all means of communication. I hope that includes radio as well. Oh, yeah, Catholic radio. In fact, I just, I just, had to, I just gave a little blurb for our Catholic radio up in Denver. Um, they're, they're doing a little kind of a, a radiothon. And I'm a, frequently on... I did, a, I did an interview on the Camino this week for EW10 Radio, and I'm, uh, I'm a regular um, on uh, Catholic Answers, um, on their, their program for non-Catholics, which is very interesting because it's an hour-long program. 
uh, with Patrick Coffin. I don't know if you've heard that program, but I'm on about every month. And it's, they screen the calls. You can't be Catholic. You have to be a not, you have to prove that you're not a Catholic to be on the show. <laughs> and so it's great because you, you the Jewish, Jews that call, Jewish people, uh, Muslims come in, call in and everything. And so it's a great program. And, it, and it's uh, wide, widely listened to. So uh, yeah, Catholic radio is great. Catholic radio is great. Any other questions? Well, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Once again, great welcome to all of us.